Time has arrived, and I call the meeting of the City Council Committee on Finance to order for today, April 16th, and it's 7 p.m. And unfortunately, we are in the basement of City Hall because our brand spanking new elevator has decided not to work. And for that, I apologize, Councilors. There's not much I could do. I was actually uh, informed at 3.13 by uh, Jim Cassieri that the elevator was having a, a hiccup. And hopefully it will be, uh, it will be better by, by next Monday. And for the guests who are here, I ask you just to perhaps sit on the seat next to our the clerk of the Finance Committee, our auditor, uh, when your time comes to, uh, to address the body. With that being said, I also want to let you uh, counselors know that uh, Councilor Nicastro had to uh, go home. She had sur you know, knee surgery a little while ago, so she's feeling a little under, under the weather. And I have not heard from the other counselors, so we're just going to proceed. Madam Clerk, item number one. Appointment of Wayne A. Lake, 56 Short Street, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited Wayne A. Lake. Again, Mr. Lake, apologies for this very informal type of setting here, but if, could you just, uh, do you have a, a statement for us? No, no, I don't. Thank you. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Any questions, folks, on the motion? Just for the record, it's a renewal, Mr. Chairman. Correct. Renewal it is. Uh, a motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? So be it, sir. Thank you very much for your Thank day. you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Number two, Madam Clerk. Appointment of Jean Rudy Rigano, <laughs> 98 Southfield Drive, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years, invited Jean Rudy Rigano. Welcome, sir. Are we uh, butchering your name, or is it the proper pronunciation of it? Hey, you know, I'm with that. Well, <laughs> I, I suffer from the same issues, so yeah. join the party. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Jean Rudy Rigano, and um, I'm trying to become, as you all know, a constable in the great city of Brockton. I'm a father of two, husband of one, okay? I only have one wife. That's a good, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Uh, I work uh, for the city of Boston as a special police officer, and uh, I'm working uh, on the federal contract for the Department of Homeland Security. And uh, I did a uh, volunteer translator for Brockton Police Department, and uh, I'm trying to uh, become a constable because I'm trying to uh, be kind of servant and uh, and uh, a public peace officer uh, who serve like a uh, civil process. Uh, I'm trying to kind of be a bridge between the court system and the people of Brockton. And um, thank you so much, guys, uh, for inviting me here today to your meeting. Even though I'm, I know I'm not going to be here after this, I, I got to leave. But it's so it's very good to actually, guys, uh, meet all of you guys, the city city officials. And when I go to the voting booths, you know, I see a lot of names. Sometimes, you know, I don't know who anyone is, you know. I'm, I'm like, you know what, I got to vote for someone, you know. I'm like, you know what, oh, this guy, you know. I like his name, you know, I, you know, I vote for him. <laughs> but it's finally, you know, seriously, it's uh, an, an honor for me, it's a privilege to actually meet all of you guys today. Well, thank you for being here. Second. And motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for your service, guys. You know, this will become be legal and real <laughs> next Monday. Thank you. Number three, uh, Madam Clerk. Appointment of Clarence Hassan, 14 Ridge Hill Avenue, Brockton, Mass., to the Planning Board for a five-year term. Invited Clarence Hassan, David Wheeler, Chairman, Planning Board. Mr. Chairman, Oh, first, let's have Mr. Are you? Uh, before. That's that's so that's correct. Yeah, Mr. Hassan. Welcome. Thank you. Comfortable? Yeah, comfortable. This yeah. is nice being in the basement upstairs. This is all new to me, so <laughs> it's an honor to be invited here and to be invited to be on the planning board committee and um, 
I don't know if I really have a whole lot to say, but I'm willing to learn and I've always wanted to uh, be part of something in the city to help out with the progress of the city. I'm going to make a favorable recommendation on the council motion. On the motion, sir. I just want to say we are fortunate to have somebody of Mr. Hassan's background and experience to be taking the, the spot on something as important as the planning board and look forward to working with him. So thank, thank you. you for your service. Thank you. Future service. Thank you, thank you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your service. Uh, number four. Total appropriation of $25,727 from Parking Authority Personal Services, other than overtime, $21,030, and Parking Authority Snow Removal, $4,697, to Parking Authority Purchase of Services, invited Robert Malley, Executive Director, Parking Authority, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Council Cruz. Uh, I just uh, want to make a motion to amend this. Uh, it, this is not an appropriation, it's a transfer. Yes, so I make, make a motion to strike appropriation and uh, replace it with uh, yes. transfer. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank Corrections you. will be made. Uh, Mr. Malley. Yeah, um, what we're trying to do is transfer money that we have uh, in personal services and in snow removal with a light winter uh, to purchase of services. That will include, uh, we have a $2,400 shortfall in electricity costs. Um, we have a $6,000 roughly shortage in uh, a lease line, uh, which resulted from uh, having to lease more spaces than anticipated in order to move people for the new garage. Uh, and then we have some, um, we have some uh, projects that need to be done at the new garage, including the door and vestibule on the fourth floor, uh, fire alarm panel, and a pipe leak uh, that needs to be replaced um, between the street and the flapper in the uh, dry uh, fire system, sprinkler system. And that's what we would like to do. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Malley. Is anybody going to ask our CFO a question at all? This yeah, whole I thought we year? might get him up here just to have him talk. Just to say hello. Just to see if he's got a voice. I mean, because I, I think the, the taxpayers think that he's a mute or something, you know, because he hasn't uh, this whole time. Maybe we'll find out if he paid the bill for the elevator. Oh, is that, that's what we're going to do? No, oh. we'll ask him. <laughs> Uh, Madam Clerk, item number five. Ordered. A copy of all legal documents. Uh, let her read it first. Do you want to read it? Yeah. yeah. Um, a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability which was the responsibility of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and which now may be incurred by the city be provided to the City Council. Two, if payments from public funds have been made for charges formally required of the corporation, such information shall be provided to the City Council. Three, Documents and information requested shall be provided within 14 days of the date of this order. Invited, Dan Evans, President, Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Michael Gallerani, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Philip Nasralla, City Solicitor. Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Council Fowell. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Council, I filed this order. It was read on April 8th. We allowed for 14 days to assimilate the information and provide it to the council. Therefore, this should be uh, postponed until sometime after April 22nd to give the parties adequate time to pull together the information. So I move to postpone this to a finance committee meeting in May. Second. Uh, the motion has been properly, uh, actually, so it will be May 6th. It will be our first uh, FinCom in May. A motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. It will be scheduled for May 6th. Madam Clerk, item number six. 
ordered that MGL Chapter 33, Subsection 59, be accepted by the City <coughs> Council. Said section of general laws is relative to public employees not to lose pay or services in the armed forces. Paragraphs A, B, C, D, E, and F, also known as the BRAVE Act, invited Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor, David Farrell, Director of Veteran Services, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Wow, that's Mr. Clarkson. Welcome to the City Council on a City Council business. Thank you, Mr. President. Happy to be here. What do you have for us on this item? The mayor filed this request to adopt this section of the general laws. This was in response to the Brave Act, which was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor last summer. Uh, this particular section affects employees uh, generally of the Brockton Police and Fire Departments who are members of the National Guard. Right now, the law limits them to 17 days of paid time uh, for the performance of their duties in the National Guard. Most uh, of their responsibilities uh, include days that extend past those 17 days. In recognition of that, the legislature passed this law allowing for local adoption, which would extend that number to 40 days. So right now, some of our people that are in service of the United States actually have to dip in to their personal vacation time to serve in the National Guard. So the acceptance of this would simply allow for them to accumulate days in service uh, to the United States or to the Massachusetts National Guard and not dip into their personal time. Uh, I have had the ability to take a look at uh, how the implementation of this may have some impact. Uh, and at least at this point, uh, I don't believe that, that there would be any financial impact because of the, the small number of employees. There are approximately 10 in the police and fire departments that would be affected by this. And uh, due to that small number, we don't anticipate that there would be any large costs for backfill or anything like that. It's really just restoring the personal time of those in service to our nation. Councilors, any question for Mr. Clark? Uh, Just, you did, I think, got what I had a couple of concerns about. So right now, there's only 10 or so. Theoretically, that could that number could be become a larger number. It, would, does this mostly affect their vacation time and their retirement? Does it affect retirement at all? No, because, I mean, their time and service to the city of Brockton remains Remains the same. Yeah, so the, the only real impact would be uh, in expanding the amount of time available to those in service. So w we met with some representatives of the police and fire departments in discussing this so that I could understand the financial impacts. And for instance, uh, one person was in arrears 11 days just this year, meaning they had spent 11 days of their personal vacation time to serve in the National Guard. Okay, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Go ahead. The, um, the director of Veterans Affairs, and with him is a new member of his team, and I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, mentioned this evening. Uh, the director, do you have anything you want to add to this thing, or are you? Uh, uh, yeah, just that uh, very supportive of it. It's a wonderful uh, benefit for. Yeah, it's a wonderful benefit for the veterans of the city of Brockton, those particularly uh, who are serving active duty and uh, members of our uh, public safety and uh, school department. Uh, it's a great thing. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, yes, I, I did want to introduce Cecile Gomes, the new veterans agent in the city of Brockton, and uh, welcome her aboard. I know welcome she'll do a great job. Very good. A motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. And thank you, Mr. Clark. And Mr. Farrell, thank you as well. Uh, number seven. Resolved to invite Patricia Monty, the Brockton representative from Mass Memories Roadshow, to be held at the Brockton Public Library on Saturday, May 18th, 2019, to inform the public and the City Council as to how to participate in this one-time only opportunity to preserve Brockton history. Invited, Patricia Money. 
It's funny, Hi. how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Um, I know you, most of you know me in a variety of different capacities from, uh, you know, working with the NAACP to working at the makerspace at the Brockton Library. But one of the other things that um, I've been doing since last fall when we received a grant from UMass Boston uh, to create a Mass Memories Roadshow, which is basically to digitize photos and other documents from uh, residents, uh, former or current residents, businesses, organizations in the city of Brockton so that the city of Brockton can be well represented in this digital archives of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, so uh, if uh, the director of the library, Paul Engel, has some information on the event, we're asking people to bring in from one to three photos on Saturday, May 18th. They will be scanned, they will be digitized, and they will be put into the library. Um, the other thing that we're asking people to do is to come in and tell the story of what the photos are that they're bringing in. So I know it's kind of difficult for you to see some of them, but um, some of these photos are absolutely priceless. Um, <laughs> here's the opening of the Westgate Mall, you know, and I'm sure we want something like that there. Here's the uh, last day of um, the final shoe factory that was here in Brockton. Um, this is something that we're hoping to have digitized <laughs> and included. We have a photo of one of your city councilors. And what's the story behind this photo? Who is she speaking with? Um, what is this event all about? Uh, the rest of you shouldn't laugh either. Um, <laughs> here's one of the city councilors who left. Um, at, appears to be at some sort of ball game with her family. Um, and then as I promised Mr. Lally, Councilor Lally, there is a photo of him. <laughs> oh, you said it might look bad. I was worried. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's some really priceless photos here that you probably want <laughs> to be included. Um, so we'd love to have you, um, Councilor Sullivan. That's a yep, that's a keeper. And then uh, Councilor Rodriguez. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, who are the other people in the, in, in the picture? What does this event represent? So we're hoping that everybody will come that day. Um, we understand that the uh, largest group that's come in is, I think, 250 people. I think we should be able to get more than 250 people in that day. And I encourage every single one of you to uh, bring a, a photo of either you know, a city council meeting, finance committee meeting, um, your own personal photos. It would be great if everybody, and if you could encourage everybody in the city to participate. Councilor uh, Borger. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I invited um, Pat in. I mean, we all know all the great stuff Pat does. This is a huge <laughs> opportunity. Cannot emphasize that you can be any age and bring in something. And that, I mean, you can be nine, you can be 100, you know, and we just cannot emphasize whether it's, you know, your Boy Scout um, badges, whether it's, um, you know, choir, just all these, you know, amazing things that, you know, make up this city. I mean, you know, poor France is, you know, in mourning right now because of something that's 800 years old. We might not go back 800 years, but we certainly have a whole lot of history and recognize and just a variety of things. And having seen some of the examples, from other much smaller communities and what they've brought in. Really, I hope, you know, some people are bringing in sometimes a, a piece of jewelry or something like that. Dedication, I mean, between, unfortunately, you know, the wars that we've had in our nation and those from our community that have served or haven't come back. There's, there's so many memories and there's, this is a once, you know, an, an opportunity and this is going to be available through, you know, in the state and we'll be receiving some of the, how would I say it, some back um, residual from that. And we really encourage everyone to be a part of it. So I want to you know, thank everyone for allowing you know, Pat to come. And I really want to thank Pat for all she does, because it's very much appreciated. And good luck. Her students are going on to competitions nationally and internationally. So uh, that's Brockton for you. That's Brockton okay. for you. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else? Mr. President. Yes, sir. Go for it. Um, 
Pat, a terrific first of all, Pat's one of my neighbors, and been, those that have been on the council a long time, I remember. Well, I can use the mic there, I'm sorry. Yeah. You guys that have been on the council for a long time may recall that I, I gave a citation on behalf of the council to Pat many years ago. It was she that stepped up when the NAACP here in Brockton had students for the AXO that actually were going to Boston to do it before it was brought back to the city of Brockton. So she's truly a, a champion within the city champions. But my question is, are we reaching out, and this is to both of you, reaching out to Stonehill since they received all of Stanley Bowman's photos? Uh, because we want to capture, even though they're, they're there at the Martin Institute at Stonehill in Easton, we'd like to make sure they're captured for the citizens of Brockton and the history of that. Has that happened? Yes. In fact, uh, they've already been at one of our planning meetings. Excellent. So, okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, anyone else? In favorable. Second. Uh, motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you Thank very you. much for all you do for our city. Madam Clerk, agenda number eight. Resolve to invite Steve Grossman, CEO of ICIC, Initiative for a Competitive Inner City, or his designee, to inform the public and city council of this new program and how individuals in the city could take advantage of this economic development opportunity. Invited Steve Grossman, CEO of ICIC. <laughs> Mr. Grossman. Welcome uh, to our cozy uh, accommodations here. We were kicked out of the chamber, so we're down here in the basement. Wherever you are in Rockton, you're in the city of champions, and I'm honored to be back, so thank, thank you very much for having me. I want you to all meet my colleague, Dee Mai, who's our senior program coordinator, who's working with me on this program as it affects Brockton. And with your permission, we'd like to give each one of you a little packet of material. When you see the presentation, don't be scared. We're not going through every page. We promise we won't do that. So I'll let you start at this end. I'll start at this end. So uh, I'm thrilled to be back here. I'm Steve Grossman. I'm here today in my capacity. Steve, come on right over here. My partner. Uh, I'm here in my capacity as chief executive officer of an organization called the Initiative for a Competitive Inner City, or ICIC. Uh, we were started 25 years ago by the well-known Harvard Business School professor, Dr. Michael Porter, because he believed that one of the most important things we could do for the economy of this country was to help revitalize older cities that had become distressed or underserved or under-resourced because of changes of the economy. And we do this program all over the country. Uh, we try to provide what we call the five C's, capacity building education, coaching, capital, connections or networking, and ultimately contracts. And the whole point is that if you can create a growing, sustainable, small business ecosystem in our cities, particularly in the 26 gateway communities of this state, of which Brockton is one, uh, if we can create a sustainable small business ecosystem and small businesses that are growing, creating good paying jobs and accessing the capital they need to grow, that that economy can grow and develop and flourish and I don't know any gateway community in this state that doesn't need more jobs and more small businesses healthy. So you're welcome to take a look at this presentation at your leisure. There's also an impact report in it, which I'm not going to refer to, but it tells the story in the years between 2005 and now when the program was created. I'd ask you to just turn your attention to slide number uh, five, lower right corner five. And that's a profile of our alumni nationally. This is a national program. Uh, through 2017, we survey these companies annually. More than 2,000 companies have been through the program. We don't work with startups. We work with established businesses that are beyond the proof of concept stage. They're doing business, they're generating revenue, but in most cases, 
The owners of these businesses, they're stuck. Nobody's ever helped them with strategy, or marketing, or team building, or entrepreneurial finance, or helped them to get the capital they need to grow. And that's such a critical piece of all this. So that is a profile of our alumni from the beginning. If you turn to page six, you'll see the proven results. We've helped these businesses access $1.9 billion of capital over the past 14 years. And the most important statistic is the upper right corner. 82% of the businesses that participate in this program will get the capital they need within two years, both debt and equity capital, to grow and to finance their growth. If you turn to page seven, or slide seven, you'll see the profile of last year's cohort. So we've put over 730 businesses through the program last year. They average revenue of $1.5 million, but we will accept companies in the program that are doing $150,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000. V will talk a little bit about the program criteria. We're looking for businesses that are established, that are growing, even if they're smaller. If you ask what kind of industries do these businesses come from, food, beverage, hospitality, construction, manufacturing, publishing, business services, um, every kind of business that you can imagine. There's virtually no business that we won't recruit into the program. If you look at the breakdown and the demographics of the program, you'll see that last year, 49% of the companies that went through this program were African American, 12% were Latinx, 7% were Asian, Roughly 70% of the participants of the program are from diverse backgrounds. And last year, for the first time, more than 50%, 54% were women-owned businesses. Page 10 will show you where we are nationally. This is a national program, although we're focused today on how can this program impact the city of Brockton and small businesses in Brockton. So you'll see we're all over the country with this program in 14 geographies. If you turn to slide nine, I will tell you the impact we've had on the small businesses that have participated in this program in what we call our Boston program, which is Boston and the gateway communities in eastern Massachusetts. So in four years, we put 337 businesses through the program. By the way, did I say that there's no cost to the program? I don't think I said that. No cost to the program, no cost to the city of Brockton, no cost to the entrepreneurs, it's fully funded by banks, insurance companies, foundations, and other people who believe that healthy small businesses are the backbone of a healthy city. We've run four cohorts. Those four cohorts have raised almost $45 million of capital. That's from banks and all kinds of gap lenders and other kinds of sources. They've grown an average of 35% top line. They've created 1,291 new jobs, almost 1,300 new jobs. Uh, turn to page 10. I'm going to let my colleague V. Mai take over and just to tell you briefly about the criteria we used for the program. There is an ask here. In fact, let me make the ask right now. What we're asking members of the council and anybody else who knows something and has their finger on the pulse of the small business economy here in Brockton to think about tonight and tomorrow any small business that would qualify for this program. If you're not sure if they're qualified, nominate them. We'll do everything we can to get them into the program. We want to see a critical mass of Brocktonians and Brockton-based businesses in this program, which will kick off on June 21st at the Federal Reserve Bank in Boston. We call it a 40-hour mini-MBA on steroids. There are no steroids involved, but we call it a 40-hour mini-MBA. It's one full day, of, full day of education at the Boston Fed, where they'll be exposed to professors and access to capital and some coaching and consulting and networking. They'll go through a series of webinars. They'll go through some coaching. And there's a national conference also in Boston in mid-November. V, take it away, program criteria. Would you like the microphone, or you? I'm going to try to do it without the microphone. Okay. Um, so to reiterate what Steve said, um, we work with a diversity of businesses. Um, and specifically, we work with businesses that have been in business for at least two years. And so typically what that looks like is, you know, I would say like a business that roughly has two full-time employees make roughly around $500,000 in average revenue. That being said, like Steve has said, we do accept businesses that make below that revenue mark because we recognize that, let's say you have a business that is ready to learn, that's ready to grow, but it's at a $250,000 or $350,000 in average revenue, then we will accept those businesses because we recognize that 
maybe they're maybe right now they're not at the stage where they can grow or excuse me at the stage where they you know at the five hundred thousand dollar mark but they can still grow and make positive impact in their communities another um criteria that we look for is that the business need to be located in an economically underserved area and we'll work with the business to figure out whether they're geographically qualified or not because we use a variety of definitions. So if you have a business in mind that you think would benefit from the program, nominate them and we'll work with them on their geographical locations. And we, you know, for our mentality going into recruitment is that we always want to work for a yes. So even if a business does not meet our criteria, we do have sister programs, and you can see them on page three um, that we can refer them to that might be a better benefit to them. Or we also have partners, external partners, where we can refer to them as a potential resource as well. Um, and so if you can also turn to page 11, um, so just going into a bit of recruitment goal, we do work with a variety of organizations, minority-owned, woman-owned business, LGBT owned business, immigrant owned. So we work with a variety of businesses and as long as you have a business in mind that you think would benefit, we would love for you to nominate them. And so the next part you can turn the page is page 12, which will give you an overview of what the program looked like. So there's four components. There is the opening seminar and for the Boston program is on Friday, June 21st at the Boston Federal Plaza. It's an all day event where they will get to learn from business professors from top flight university, including Harvard, Northwestern, uh, Dartmouth. Um, after the opening seminar, you have the webinars. We have a variety of webinars this year, ranging from e-commerce to um, you know, government certifications, and the business have to watch at least three of the 12 webinars that we provide. Following that is the coaching uh, component, and we have two routes for coaching. The first one is general coaching, and general coaching here is general management coaching. So let's say if a business is looking to clean up its book, then we'll refer them to either our score coach or our PCP coach, where they'll get help on how to do QuickBook, for instance. If they're looking to pitch for capital, then we'll uh, pair them with a uh, banker or a capital provider who will work with them to straighten their pitch and perfect their pitch before they go into a meeting with a banker or equity capital provider. Uh, following that is our national conference, and this year's national conference is in Boston in mid-November, and it's a great opportunity to meet all the participants uh, from our 15 cohort this year, as well as learn about you know sessions regarding strategies, pricing. Uh, it's just a great opportunity to learn from your fellow peers. And if you can turn to the next page, um, so Steve briefly mentioned the five C's, so I'm not going to go into much detail, but. These are the five core benefits of the program. You have capacity building, coaching, capital, connection, and contracts. Um, and these are what you know, we would offer to the businesses that are participating in the program. So with regard to Steve asked, if you can go to the next page. So this is what the nomination and application process look like in terms of um, the step-by-step -step process. So once you identify the business, we would love for you to nominate them. And after you nominate them, please make sure to let them know that you have nominated them so that, let's say if you have this business in mind, the ice cream parlor, and you happen to see me at a grocery store, you will want to know whether I have been accepted into the program or not. So we want to make sure that the nominator are being kept in the loop, as well as the nominator are taking an active role in letting the companies know, um, you know whether they've been, excuse me, letting the companies know that they've been nominated or not, and um, so that you know, there is like a communication between you and your nominee. Following that, you can turn to the next page is our application timeline. Um, and this just go into a bit more details about what the nomination application process looked like specifically for the Boston program. And the last part um, is, you know, if you would like to attend the opening seminar on June 21st, we would love to have you. It's a great opportunity to see the program in action. Um, and it's like, you know, if you do happen to nominate, you know, businesses that will be participating in the program, it's a great opportunity to see, you know, those nominees uh, learn from uh, our program. So just two final thoughts. We'll open it to any questions, depending, Mr. President, as to whether or not there's any time left. But uh, first of all, I want to express personal appreciation to Councillor Ann Beauregard for having invited us. We came down here and made a presentation 
at a, uh, at a morning session on opportunity zones, because as you know, opportunity zones are something that Brockton can take advantage of and bring some capital in. Uh, Anne was particularly uh, impressed by what she heard, not just from us, but from everyone. I mentioned this program to her. She said, I'd love to bring you down to Brockton to meet with our finance committee and our counselors, because I think our counselors probably know more about small businesses in the city collectively than any other group of women and men in the city. So it's our hope that you would be willing to share with us the email addresses of each member of the council. We will then email you a two-page summary of the program, which you can send out to any small business that wants to see it. It's a summary of the program, really everything that we've said here, telescoped onto one page or two pages. Um, we will send it to you, and then we will send you also the forms that you can use to nominate companies. But we'll send you our phone numbers, email addresses, so if you want to pick up the phone and say, look, I've got three businesses, I've already talked to them, here are the names, here are the phone numbers, call Dorothy, Harry, and Tom, and talk to them because they know you're going to be calling. 10-minute application process to fill out. We do a diagnostic over the phone with every applicant. We try to assess, are they ready for the program? If they're ready, we go through a process of accepting them. We keep you fully informed as to who was nominated, who's been accepted, who's going to the program, who went to the opening seminar, so that at no point are you ever embarrassed by meeting somebody whom you never heard back about and they were accepted into the program. We believe in communication. So all we need is your email addresses. We'll follow up with each one of you. Thank you for listening. I know we've probably gone over our time, but we're very grateful for this opportunity to speak to you. The future of this city is largely in the hands of its elected officials and its citizens. And those small business owners need access to capital, to growth, to education, and to networking. That's what we provide at no cost, and we hope this resonates with you. We look forward to working with you. We'd love to bring the nominations all in between now and the, say, the um, uh, first week of May. You'll see here the process. We need a little bit of time to process nominations, but this week, next week, and into the first week or 10 days of May, we've got three weeks or so to do this. So hopefully you'll respond. Hopefully you'll see this beneficial. We thank you for listening and happy to answer any questions if you have them. Um, I believe I would say this is the kickoff, so to speak, for um, weeks to come, and we're going to be, how would I say, spreading the word about this, and we're grateful that you came down, and um, like I said, this is only the beginning. We, we know so many talented people. We know several, you know, with challenges, and uh, we believe that there are many people in various age groups and uh, various levels of experience that uh, could certainly benefit from all this, and we're grateful that you're part of this. So thank you very much again. Thank you. The two-pager we're going to send you is the one you have in your packet, but when you get it electronically, it'll be suitable for you to send out to any small business owner or any friend or any colleague in the city to say, hey, learned about this program. Maybe you know a small business. It's done in one and twos. If we could find a dozen businesses in the city of Brockton, nominate them, and eight or ten of them participated on June 21st, I think that would make a dramatic statement about Brockton's capacity to create a healthy small business ecosystem. I believe in Brockton, always have, whether I ran for governor, whether I ran for treasurer. I believe in the city. You believe in the city. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we hope that this is something that you can uh, benefit from. Actually, just wanted to s s take a minute. This is an exciting kind of program, and I have to say, I've worked with Mr. Grossman on both of his campaigns, and this is what real people in politics do. Many people, I don't think everybody knows his story out there, but many of these businesses, if you're going to nominate somebody, you should tell them about Steve Grossman. He's actually not just been a politician. He has run major, a major business. He has built businesses, and I have to tell you that most people at his station in life would put their name as a CIA, CEO on companies like this, on organizations like this. They wouldn't be coming down to Brockton on a Tuesday night in April and sitting in the basement of, the, uh, of City Hall. They, those people mean well and they put their name on it. This is somebody who's put his money where his mouth is and he's down here. I can't tell you, this excites me and a lot of programs don't because they're not real. This is real. The fact that you're here, it, it's a lesson to all of us what we should be doing when we finish running for office 
put put your money where your mouth is, and he has. And I I can't thank you enough for being here and what you and what you're doing. So we will look. For, I, I'll be looking for some people, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Just following up on that, much appreciation. I think, as my colleague said, that this is real. This is something tangible. So a lot of people will say, well, "What do you have to offer us if we were to come to Brighton?" And one of the things that I noticed, is, and by the way, page 18, both of your emails are there. So I'll send you mine. And the rest of the council will do the same thing. One of the criteria I thought was interesting: if 40 percent of the employees are in a business that might be in a community contiguous to Brighton and that business might want to move into the city, that could be a viable criteria for nominating someone. Have I read that correctly? Yeah, it, it really works in both directions. Let's assume a business is not located in the city of Brockton. Let's assume it's located in, I don't know, Easton. Take a, any, any community that's near Brockton. But if 40% of the workers who work in that business that's not in Brockton live in the city of Brockton, and you'd like to see that, look, you'd rather have that business in Brockton. But if it's not in Brockton, but if they can grow and create jobs that then accrue to the people of the city of Brockton, you're creating jobs for the people of this community. The goal, ultimately, is to get healthy businesses located within the city limits of Brockton that get the capital, the coaching, and can grow and create jobs and to create a bright future for the city that's changing so dramatically and has so much potential, particularly small businesses. Small business is the backbone of any community. Any growth, by and large, is going to happen because small businesses make it happen. So that's why we're here, because it's the capital, the growth, and the education that they need in order to have a, have a shot at the brass ring. Well, I guess my final comment would be that Economic development is like putting a puzzle together. There are all these different pieces, and this certainly could be a, a primary piece of a puzzle if someone, some existing business in the city wanted to expand. Or, conversely, if a business is sitting just outside the city, and maybe for, for various reasons they'd like to be in the city, closer to commuter rail, avail themselves of the services that we have, we, we now have a piece of the puzzle to offer them. And for some it may work out, for some it may not, but it certainly is a, it certainly is a very positive opportunity for the right business if they want to avail themselves of this. Uh, and just a quick comment, the good news is that let's assume we do get six or eight or ten businesses to join this program this year from Brockton. That becomes the Alumni Association next year, and who are the best salespeople for a program that can create growth? It's the people who have been through the program who say to their friends, I went through this program last year. I got some capital. I got some coaching. I'm already grown 20% since last year because of some things that I learned. We want to send people away on June 21st with four or five things they can put to work in their business the next day. The biggest problem people have is oh my God, I'd love to do this, but I'm so busy working in my business that I can't take a step back and work on my business. That's what this program is all about, to help them realize their full potential. So thank you for your confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, Councilor Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Steve, I've known you since you were running for governor, and one of the things that, uh, that has been always fascinating about you with, um, I work with Deb Fastigo from Coalition for Social Justice, is that it's your ability to think for a city like Brockton, especially uh, a gateway city like this one. And, and one of the things that I think is amazing about this program is the fact that it is at no cost to the city and no cost to the business. I think this is very uh, impressive. But knowing you as a person, this is something that I know you are passionate about it. And Council Cruz couldn't say it better in terms of like how much you care about places like this, like this city. So um, I would like to uh, publicly acknowledge you know, your, your, your determination to making sure that not just, uh, you know, the 26 uh, gateway of cities that we have, but also every city and town in Massachusetts that I believe you'd like to see them succeed. So uh, as a young person myself, I believe that you do have what it takes, not just to talk, but also to, talk, to walk the talk. So um, with that being said, I just want to congratulate you and thank you so much uh, for taking the time you know, to come down all the way here to actually make that presentation. You know, not just you, but I would like to also thank your partner you know, for doing a wonderful job. And I know you, you put your heart into this, and I know you are willing to go above and beyond. One thing that I can tell you is that I will do my best uh, to reach out to a few businesses and talk to them about this program, and I, and I cannot wait uh, to receive that email with that summary when we get to this program, because I think this is something that I will be able to take a look at 
and hopefully you know articulate that and give it to them because I think this is one of the best things that we can actually welcome to a place like Brockton as we speak because I strongly believe this is something that will put our small business to the next level. So thank you so much for taking the time to come down here to make that presentation. And I do believe that each and every single one of, one of us are truly impressed about the job that you've done. It was very eloquent, well-spoken, and very easy to understand. So I hope to see you soon again. So best of luck with this program, man. Thank you. I'll, I'll, tr I'll try not to let all these nice things go to my head. Um, but think about, look to the left and look to the right. If every counselor sitting at this table, and there are 10 of you tonight, uh, were to nominate one business that actually showed up on June 21st, if we put 10 businesses in that room, one business per counselor, I know it never works quite that way, but if we think about it in those terms, I tell you, that group of 10 businesses will be, on a, will be a story on the front page of the enterprise that Brockton small business ecosystem is taking a big step forward. And why not the council to make that happen? Because nobody knows more about the city of Brockton than the city councilors who represent the, the, the wards as well as the at large uh, parts of the city. Thank you for saying that. very exciting. My question to you is, I know you said nominations, but are nominations only through elected officials or? No. So how, how can somebody? Businesses can self-nominate. Mm -hmm. If you send this to a group of people and they say, gee, I want to participate in this program, uh, they can apply on their own. Anybody can nominate a business, but generally when somebody who's respected in an office such as a city councilor, and my daughter-in-law is privileged to be a city councilor in the city of Newton. If a councilor nominates a business and says, I learned about this program, I want you to apply for this program, there's no cost to it, I've let them know you're going to apply, they'll be in touch with you and send you an application. If they know that a member of the council nominated them, when we get in touch with them, they're gonna know and they're gonna respond. If we, if you simply nominate them and send in 10 names and they don't know that they've been nominated by a member of the council, they're going to delete our email about as fast as it came into their inbox because we all know we got to clear out our inboxes all the time. So the most important thing you can do is not only identify a business, tell them that they're going to be nominated, nominate them, let V know that you have nominated them, we'll take it from there and I guarantee you the success rate will be very high. Well, thank you. And if no, you're that's... a business person yourself, and you're a small business person? Very small, yes. What? <laughs> Very small business. You should but consider participating yourself. Think that's what my colleague here was telling me, but um, I have my hands full with uh, the city council, but this is exciting, and I can see many small businesses, the businesses in the city of Brockton taking advantage of it, really. Um, I hope we do, and I'm going to do my best to get the word out there. Thank I you. was uh, When I saw this, I really thought of our Chamber of Commerce, which deals with all, has many members who do have small businesses, so I will help put the word out there. Um, I really want to see Brockton take advantage of it, and thank you for bringing this to us. Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good evening and thank you for being here. Um, it's great to see you and, and this is exciting. I mean, this is another tool for the toolbox that we need uh, to revitalize the city of Brockton. The, the 40, almost 45 million in, in, in capital raised. My question is, if you're going to the private sector, is it just strict financing or do you have to give up an equity stake in your business? Is it just statistically no, the, loan the, financing? The capital that we help businesses raise, it doesn't come from us. Right. It, comes from, it comes from a variety of lenders and investors. About two-thirds of it is debt, so it's either bank financing, it comes through a community development finance institution, it comes through a gap lender, it comes through alternative forms of lending. Sometimes foundations lend money to small businesses, and then sometimes it's equity capital. A business says, gee, I have too much debt. I can't take on any more debt. So they sell a quarter of their business to uh, another group uh, that wants to invest in their business. And with that capital that they get, they can grow. So some of it is equity. 
but you buy Would no you have a percentage on that? I mean, is it like half a, the financing? It's about two thirds debt, one third equity on average. If you look at that slide that showed 1.9 billion, yep. it's I think $650 million over the last 12 years has been equity, and the other 1.3, almost 1.2, 1.3 has been debt. So about two thirds debt, one third equity, and it's from about 150 different lenders and yep. investors all over the country. Okay. We work with lenders and investors all over the country because it's not restricted to just the lenders here in Brockton, although that's generally where much of the capital will come from. That's good to know. Thank you. Credit unions as well as different, as well as banks themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Motion to recommend favorably. Thank you. Your colleague did mention that our email addresses are on, I think it's the last page. So rather than necessarily sending us all the email addresses, um, I, I don't remember, frankly, how many, how many counselors do you have in all? Eleven. Eleven. So you're almost all here. So if each one of you would tomorrow email V. I'll be in Memphis tomorrow, running to Memphis because we run this program in Memphis. Kickoff is Thursday. If you would email V tomorrow and just send your email address, we'll send you the two-pager electronically, we'll send you the nomination forms electronically, and over the next three weeks, let's make it happen. Thanks so much. Thank you. Very grateful to you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks. So uh, it's going to be upstairs in the chamber. We're going to have one agenda item on it for that evening. And again, May 8th, 6 p.m. And then also, anybody that celebrates it, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to um, remind everybody, I'm sure many heard, uh, keep Brockton beautiful, which was supposed to happen uh, this past Saturday, was postponed due to weather. So it was postponed to Saturday, April 27th. Volunteers are still needed, and um, if somebody would like to volunteer, please contact the recycling department at 508-580-7827. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, a good day. It did end up being nice in the end, but um, it was a little wet and damp in the morning. So uh, look forward to seeing everybody there April 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we also want to remember those that are observing Passover. And um, I have two things here. I have my ward meeting, well, my ward meeting, community meeting. All the counselors and everybody in the universe is invited. Tuesday, a week from today, April 23rd, um, doors open at 6.30 p.m., Plouffe Academy. Several um, issues on the agenda. And if I might, uh, Mr. President, sir, yes. I had filed a resolve about um, retirement and having someone um, rep from um, the retirement division of our city come and speak at some point and I just don't want to forget about that because there's been discussion about some people actually retiring so anyway I want to pass that that on thank you sir okay. just a moment of personal privilege right, I'd like to just take a minute to wish my daughter Allison and say Kevin best wishes she's getting married this Saturday I happen to be petrified I don't picture myself out on the dance floor uh, you know cutting any magic moves but I'm sure it will be wonderful and Allison we love you Kevin we love you and we wish you a much happiness <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, just a reminder, this Thursday, 6 o'clock, George's Cafe, I'll be having a ward meeting. So Thursday, and I will be serving pizza and beer. No, just for, just for council crew. <laughs> On the house. Okay, thank you. Right, sir. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank the uh, uh, Brockton uh, area branch of the NAACP. Uh, they had their wonderful, uh, cook and I know a lot of the counselors went there uh, on Saturday, uh, but there's a community cookbook that's floating around right now, 995, page 30 is the Irish Guinness beef stew from 
for my myself, but uh, I know Council Azak's in there as well, and, and some of the others. But again, it's 9.95. You can get it directly through Phyllis Ellis, president of the uh, NAAC branch. But it's definitely uh, a great book with some great recipes. So I strongly encourage that. Thank you.